Today, I'm gonna to show you a workflow using Apple Shortcuts that allows you to add watermark logos on top of your images. You can add it to a single image or multiple images. And once you've set up this shortcut, it really becomes a simple one-touch process to apply a watermark to any photographic image. So to do this, the first step would be to open the Shortcuts app. If you haven't used it before, do a search for Shortcuts and open the application. You should be on the homepage of the Shortcuts app and you'll see a number of pre-existing shortcuts that may have already been created. Now to create a new shortcut, click on the plus button icon and the first thing we'll do is give our shortcut a name. I'll call this image watermark. And then you can click on the thumbnail icon, change the color and also the icon itself to better represent the type of shortcut that you're creating. The first step is to click on this settings tab here and to select use as quick action. We're gonna include this in the finder and in the services menu. If you are creating shortcuts that you'd like to share on other devices, you could also opt to select the show in share sheet and receive what's on screen on iPhone and iPad. But at this stage, we're gonna keep this exclusive to OS X. You can leave the inputs as is, or you could change this to be specific to certain types of media only. So we are dealing with photos today. I'm gonna to clear all, and I'm going to select images. We wanna receive input from our quick action, which is correct. And if there's no input, we could ask for a photo. Next, click on the action library icon. We want to create an overlay image. To do that, you can look it up in the media folder or you could type in the words overlay image in the search field, double click on it and add it to the shortcut. So by default, it should say overlay image on shortcut input. Next, we're going to need to add our PNG logo as the overlay image. Do a search on file in the actions library and drag the file in above the overlay image. If you drag it below, this step may not work. So make sure it sits above the overlay image. Then go and search for your PNG file. My PNG file is in my pictures folder. In a subfolder I've called logo, and it looks something like this. It's a transparent PNG of my logo in white that I'd like to overlay over my images. So go to File, Pictures, Logos, and select your overlay image. Now we need to change our overlay image action to reference the file that we just loaded in. So click on the image option, change it to select magic variable, and then click on File. So now, you should see that it has an overlay file on file. Now, I don't want it to overlay on a file. I want it to overlay on my shortcut input. So hold down the control key and change that second command to overlay file on shortcut input. The shortcut input is the photo that we're going to apply this watermark to. So if you've done everything right so far, you should have these three different sheets. You've got your receive input, you have your image, and then you have your overlay file on shortcut input. If you click on show more on the overlay action, there's an option to show the image editor or to not show the editor. So if we, if we leave it to ticked at this stage, let's just go and quickly test our progress so far. I'm gonna to go to a photo that I've got here on my desktop. It's a photo of a tree. And I'm going to right click on that photo or control click with the mouse. And I'm gonna go down to the quick actions menu. And I'm gonna select the new image watermark shortcut that we've just created and let's have a look at what happens. So as you can see, the image editor appears with our logo and we can actually move that image around anywhere we like on screen and also change the opacity 
of that watermark. Now, at this stage, we haven't actually created the remaining commands of the shortcut to save that image down. So we're gonna take a look at doing that next. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the actions library, and this time we're going to look for a save file action. And we're going to drag that below the overlay. And that should now show save overlaid image, which is exactly what we want. And if we click on show more, we get an option to ask where to save and to overwrite if file exists. We're gonna leave that set to ask where to save. And in the previous overlay action, we're now gonna take off the show image editor option. And when we do that, there's a number of options below that allow us to determine where we're going to position our logo. By default, it will be set to center and you can change the dimensions of the logo and position until you're happy with the exact size and placement of your watermark. So let's have a quick look at this result here. Image watermark, desktop save. So we've gone for the bottom right hand corner at around that size, which is much more subtle and discreet than having it in the middle of the screen. So you can play around with all those parameters until you're fully happy with the size and position of your watermark. Now we could leave it there, but there's one slight improvement we could make to this shortcut, and that is to avoid it asking where to save each time we want to run the shortcut. So this will basically speed up the process that when you apply the shortcut to your image, it'll automatically create the image without that annoying pop-up. So to do that, we're gonna add two more actions. The first one is get parent directory of. So again, in the shortcut actions window, we're gonna search for a new action. And this one is get parent directory. And we're gonna drag that into the top of our workflow. And that should say get parent directory of shortcut input. And then we're gonna add the get name action and drag that in just below the parent directory. Now, if you find that it doesn't allow you to drag it underneath, drag it on top and then rearrange the order once these actions have been added. So the name should be get name of shortcut input. Okay, and in the final step, we're going to uncheck ask where to save. And then you'll see that you now get an option to save the file to a specific location. By default, it's probably gonna show shortcuts. We now need to change that to a magic variable and we wanna save it to the parent directory. So control click on shortcuts and then select and select magic variable. And now we're going to select parent directory. So your save action should now look like this, save overlaid image to parent directory with the ask where to save unchecked. Now, if we go and run that command, I'm gonna go into the photos folder where I've placed this particular photo, right click on it, quick actions, and select our image watermark shortcut. And now you can see that it's automatically applied our watermark and saved it down with the same file name with a dash to next to it. I'm gonna click on that, hit the space bar to preview, and as you can see, it's created our watermarked image. So now anytime you want to apply a watermark to any photo, all you need to do is to go and locate that photo, right click on it using control and mouse, quick action, image watermark, and your watermarked image will be applied. I mentioned earlier that one of the main benefits of using shortcuts is that you can not only do this on a single image, but you could apply it kind of in a batch process format to multiple images. So to do that, all you need to do is to put your images into one folder. So I've created an image folder here called Melbourne. I've got a number of images taken here in Melbourne. And I want, to, I want to apply my watermark onto all of those images. So to do that, all you need to do is to hold down the shift key, select all your images, and whilst they're all selected, highlighted in gray here, hold down the control or right click your mouse, select quick actions, 
image watermark. And for the first time you do this, you'll see this allow image watermark to access your folder. And as you can see, all those watermark images have just been added to that folder in one step. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And by all means, if you have any comments or questions about the content you've seen here today, drop them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as possible. Bye for now.